Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the second installment in the Blast from the Past series, which is basically an offshoot of the gay world of narcissism. But, uh,. It's kind of strange because after doing that first uh, episode, okay, Orange is the New Black, I'm not Alex, but it got me thinking about some of the other stuff from like way back in the archives that was totally probably blocked out because it was sick, <laughs> but I figured I could could share this for you teens out there because we all know that the modern day technology is way different than it was back then in the 80s but I will give you these stories so you can laugh at them and be glad you don't have to deal with such things or maybe you still do I mean human beings are universal this is basically pre-teen which I'm surprised I remember, which I have a crazy memory. I can remember, like, explicit detail from, like, a grade school classroom session one day, but then forget other years' worth of stuff, which is strange. But be thankful I can remember this one, because it might steer you in the right direction or prevent you from going in the wrong direction. But basically, back in those old days, before you all were born, I was raised, as I said in the last episode, in a suburban, like, normal environment where people looked like Farrah Fawcett, and they didn't do anything to rock a boat or anything like that, and they were pretty... Christian and anti-gay and here I was a kid a preteen growing up realizing that oh my goodness that's hot and that's a man and then hearing somebody say that person's a fag and thinking what's a fag that's a guy who likes other guys so I'd be like ooh oh that's gross because but then I would think wait a second but I like that uh, so it was very crazy to experience because it's what religions do is they make you feel inferior based on your own natural desires or beliefs and to imprison you into thinking that you better stop those thoughts, you better stop those behaviors or whatever they could be. But that's a different story for a different time. But anyway, I did not know any gays. I knew let's say 13, 14, I knew what I liked, and I knew that what I liked was not right, so I couldn't really express it, but I still knew it, and I figured, well, I can't fake what I like, and so I was a little rebellious as well, as which came out later, but at first, I was just kind of like just trying to figure it all out. However, I would meet these kids at these malls and these places that people used to go, and name dropping. I, I, th I think of it like this. In those days, we were the elite. We weirdos were the elite because the top 40 normal fair faucet haired people, they were like normal and dull. But we had that subculture I mentioned where we probably had narcissistic traits thinking we're better than all that crap of those fools that all look the same. At least we have different looks and like different music that's not on the radio, which nowadays it is, but back then it was. It was like underground. But we felt like we had like an affiliation together in this subculture. But regardless, at the malls, 
they had record stores. I don't think those exist anymore, <laughs> but they had record stores. And I used to go there and spend, uh, well, <laughs> still do if I go to New York City at the Virgin Mega Store, but I would stand there for hours looking at every album cover. Back in the old days, they had LPs, big LPs. But I heard through the grapevine that a gay worked at one of these record stores. And I was, of course, like infatuated thinking, a gay, a real one? Because I didn't know any gays. I didn't know what it was to be a gay except what I heard, which what I believe, which is really retarded now, but I thought that if someone is a gay, that means, if it's a man, that it's a man who likes men, period. Which means, in my twisted logic, I thought, oh, if I put myself in his presence, he's going to be all over me because I'm a man or male, but that is not the way it works, which I learned at a later time. But again, I was a stupid kid with no role models to follow, so all I could do was go to that record store, look at him and fantasize and think, ooh, he's really doing it. He's accepting who he is, but I couldn't dare tell my friends and family that I'm like that. So I was just like in awe of him and would go watch him and look at him. And I would meet people too, other places, who happened to be his friend. And they would like say, oh yeah, he's working down there at the record store. And I would think, ooh, really? And I'd go check it out. But again, I was so shy, so self-conscious, so not outgoing at all. So I would just go in there, look at him, he'd say, can I help you find something? And I'd say, I'm just looking. And I would just be standing there in this strange feeling, like, look at that. Oh, I was in awe. But again, I was preteen. If he said, hey, baby, come on, I wouldn't know what to do. But regardless, the idea was to figure it out. So weeks passed. I'd go in and out, see him here, see him there, but never really, like, spoke to him because I did not have the level of self-confidence required for such things, which is different today. Today, I go in there and say, hey, look at that Madonna poster. <laughs> look at her outfit. She's Illuminati. <laughs> but not then. So what ended up happening here was I was very creative and had a very large imagination that liked to come up with ideas and... I took a piece of notebook paper and figured, I know what I'll do. I'll write a letter to the guy. And again, this is before the days of cell phones, before the days of texting. And so I wrote this big, long letter, just as if he was a friend, like, hey, yeah, you work in the record store. Oh, I love this group. I love that group, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, and I'd mention names I knew that were affiliated with him. And I would, like, hint. I would never, dra would never like, flat out say, I think you're cute, I would like to meet you. I didn't say anything like that, because pff, I didn't know how. But I would just, like, say things about this and about that. And then eventually, I put this letter in an envelope, and of course my heart was racing. I had adrenaline going when I figured, I'm going to drop this off and see what happens. Maybe I'll get to meet a real gay and find out what it's like and what it means. So I walked in there one day, stupidly, and, like, walked up to him and was like, and I took the envelope and dropped it. And then I said, that's for you. <laughs> Stupid. And I walked off and left. So I figured, okay, I, I, I planted the seed. He's got the letter. Okay. So I figured when I get home, the phone's going to ring and we'll have a big night, nice talk. Wrong. <laughs> Did not happen. And, of course, week would pass, week would pass. I'd call the store. Stalker, mini stalker as a 13, 14-year-old stalker. Hi, did you get that letter? Oh, I just wanted to make sure. Oh, and and eventually another time I showed up, and I don't recall exactly if it was him or a co-worker, but a girl, but someone said, oh, he's got a response for you. And I was like overjoyed, thinking, really? Oh, my ship has come in. Oh, and of course, that's not the way it worked. But um, I got this response. And it was in an envelope, and I took it and ran out of there. <laughs> so I... Basically, though, the letter I got was a rejection. Basically saying, the phone calls have got to stop. The this has got to stop. And it said something which I should have known. I didn't know, but it's like, 
If you want to meet someone, just go up and talk to them. Don't leave notes in a, in a record store on the floor for them. Which, again, I... So, I was like, oh, okay, like soaking in every word. Because I was misinformed about the type of person it was. But then, of course, several years later, I ended up finding some friends of his that I would tell the story to. It's like, yeah, you know, but when I was a preteen, this happened. And I'd show him the letter. And to my shock and surprise, one of the girls that read it said, this ain't his handwriting. He didn't write this. And she knew something about it because evidently it was like some scandal like, oh, this young kid is writing me letters and flirting with me and da da da. And that, that was me. So here I was humiliated thinking I didn't know what to do. I did what I thought I should and this is what it became of it. So when we started to get older like uh, teens, I'd see him out at some of the same venues I was at, some of the same concerts, sort of nightclubs for kids. And I, it would be just like a sorry subject where I would just like, oh, there he is. And of course he would do the, hmm, and look the other way. So I figured I ruined it with him. That was a mistake. So I felt kind of like a failure at that point with as far as him because I followed my instincts, but they were totally off and probably off-putting. So here he was later, and I was just thinking, oh, can't we just forget all that? But any time I'd see him, he'd look the other way and walk away, so I felt rejected. So, so throughout the teenage years, I would just kind of worry if he's out there. I hope kind of he was, but at the same time, uh, was kind of worried if he was there. But as time passed, I noticed I was meeting more and more people who were within his circle of friends. So it kind of made me feel like a little bit of power, like, well, I'm friends with this person and she's friends with him, so I can't be that bad. Because I had some kind of complex because I felt inferior then. I was going down the wrong tracks or doing the wrong things. Well, this went on for a while and still never spoke to the person again. I mean, I might see it, but it would turn the other way. Well, I went to college later and became more of an adult in appearance and uh, went to the gym and got into shape and one per I started uh, going to a nightclub downtown that was for 21 year olds and over and I was like 20 or 19 but I had a fictitious ID so I would go there and because they had the best music just like in the teen days they had the great music I knew the same DJ that used to work at other places I was at so I would go there and this was like many years after the teen years because we're now in the 20 years so there was that record store boy and he, I was there, and that night I didn't want to wear any kind of hair, so I had like a baseball hat on with the bill in front. And I saw him and looked at him, and it was kind of like, oh, I know who you are. And it's kind of like when you have a feud in grade school, and then like maybe 20 years later you run into the person, and you laugh at it thinking it was silly how you all treated each other. Well, he was actually being friendly. He was being flirtatious and nice. And I felt a sense of victory, like, wow, I finally resolved this. Because he, was, he took my baseball hat and yanked it off and put it on backward. And, and I started that trend ever since, because it looks better backwards anyway. But uh, he was my dance partner, like to the music. Mm, 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 the dance music. Mm, 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 whatever, but it was fun. And I, again, felt kind of like a burden being lifted, thinking, wow, he's being friendly, because he was a kid too back then. I was just more of a kid, but it was nice. So then I started hanging around circles that he was involved in, went to a party one night and actually ended up sleeping right next to him on a mattress on the floor, and I just thought, you know what? Finally, I got to talk to this person and show this person that I'm no longer that preteen kid, and whatever. But it was just kind of like a success story.
where I could get over uh, my insecurity because I didn't know how to talk to someone. And then I think we discussed a little of it there, here and there, but the point was I had a lot of good close friends that were his friends, and I figured, you know what, it doesn't make any sense for us to be enemies. And of course, we weren't. So, there is hope. It may take time, though. That's your advice, or your information. Be safe and nice. I'm a high fashion model.